Motolite, last two minutes brought to you by Motolite, pang matagalan, last two minutes of the series, last two minutes of the season. Daniel Defonso against Meg. Here's Freeman, who fakes Freeman. And he is fouled by David Noel. Oh, just painful right there. Freeman wasn't even looking at the ring. But the temptation to try to swipe the basketball, just too great for David Noel. There was a time San Miguel was thinking about whether or not to keep Gabe Freeman. They brought in Chris Williams for a couple of games, but ultimately they stuck with Gabe Freeman. And if San Miguel holds on to this lead, San Miguel will not regret making that decision. And Pingris. Remember, Pingris was part of that big start by San Miguel in the first quarter. But he had a ton of points. Not only did he do his share in terms of points, he did his rebounds, gave a number of assists. He has been huge in this closing game. Daniel Defonso. And he has fouled and he will take two. A minute and 24 remaining here in game number seven. This last offensive set just really painful for Barangay Ginebra. They fouled Freeman when he wasn't supposed to be fouled. He missed two free throws, gave them an opportunity, but they didn't clear off defensive glass. San Miguel eats up more time, and now they're back at the free throw line. This reading just looks to me, Barangay Ginebra, tired team, did not get anything anymore from J.J. Heltebrad in the fourth quarter, did not get anything from David Noel in only two points in the second half, and nothing in the fourth quarter. And Eric Meng also only three points or two points in the fourth quarter. Daniel Defonso, this is going to be an emotional championship if San Miguel holds on for Daniel Defonso personally on a personal level. And San Miguel now on top 85. Back with us here with one minute and 21 remaining in the fourth. And Helter Brand still plugging away. He'll be helped out by Don Don here and Mark Pingris. You know, Helter Brand scoreless here in the fourth in this series. Some, somehow, for some reason, uh, Helter Brand does not produce as much in the fourth as he does in the first three quarters. And you have to salute Helter Brand or salute Helter Brand for how far he has brought in Ebra without Mark Aguiwa by his side. You know, it just shows how much effort he has to put into the first three quarters to allow his team to have an opportunity to win and when the fourth quarter comes it's almost like he's hoping that one of his guys can come up big to close out the game and now Hinebra uh, will be giving up fouls to try and save some time and maybe even watch San Miguel miss some free throws here and you know Hinebra at this point could still be feeling the ill effects of that opening quarter when San Miguel raised a 13-point lead off that energetic start fueled by guys like Jonas Villanueva and uh, Mark Pingris and Gabe Freeman and Nandin Kowanko consoling his brother Henry Kowanko Henry of course associated with Ginebra and Ambassador Dabdin Kowanko uh, always always uh, backing up the San Miguel beer men and a rebound here for David Noel. Uh, let's see if Inebra still has one last push in them. Helter Brand for three. In and out. Because that's been the that's been the story. No three-point shots the entire second half. This is a team that threw up 196 three-point shots, averaging more than 30 a game in the series. And in this game, could only muster two makes in the critical game of the series. And it didn't help that they lost Sunday Salvation in the opening quarter because of a flagrant foul penalty too. So no Sunday specials at all in this game. And you know, the, the promise of San Miguel's juggernaut lineup now coming into fruition in the historic first ever Game 7 meeting between these two storied organizations it does appear that San Miguel is going to win out very interesting first time they've met in a Game 7 for all the years and all the years that these two franchises have been good 
and, and, and they really made their name in the PBA. And now it's just a matter of time before San Miguel hoists their 18th PBA championship. That is unprecedented. It is unequaled. The winning esteem in the PBA is about to celebrate yet another PBA championship here in front of 21,000 fans. And I tell you, there are some Hinebra fans here that may want to leave because they cannot bear to watch, but they can't move <laughs> because there are 20, 21,000 fans here. It's hard to move. It's hard to get out. Amigo, we have to give credit to Barangay Hinebra. If you were a Barangay Hinebra fan heading into this series, if you, someone said you will have two chances to wrap up this series, I'm sure you would have taken it. They had two chances. They got beaten in game six. They seemed like they came out a little flat in game six. Had another chance in game seven. But in the first couple of minutes, really, San Miguel took control and really took a lot of wind out of the sails of uh, Barangay Hinebra in, just in the start of the game. And that's a three-pointer for Ronald Tobin. With 41 seconds remaining here. And here's Pingris. So it's time management here for the San Miguel Beerman. Just less than a minute away from championship bliss. And Confetti is now being hurled into the air. We still have 21 seconds remaining here. But some of the Hinebra players already heading remaining here. What about Bethune Shot Tankinson? You know, assembling this team and bringing them all the way to the finals and he finally brings them to the promised land. Well, he, last time he experienced a championship, he was side by side with Coach Jong Chico wearing the jersey or the uh, uh, coach's uniform of Barangay Hinebra was asked to move over to San Miguel for another shot at a head coaching job and another shot of uh, building or winning a championship took less than uh, two and a half years it took less than two years and finally he's done it again what's amazing is for coach Shotankinsen has never lost in a series to coach Jong Chico that, that is a phenomenal stat Shotankinsen was not drafted He's not signed. Uh, it took a while before he got to play. And then he became coach of Inebra. And now he's going to become a champion coach of the San Miguel Beermen. And uh, just 10 seconds remaining here. And the celebration has started. For your 2009 Motolai PBA Fiesta Conference champions, the San Miguel Beermen. championships for the winningest franchise in PBA history and even the director gets a victory ride and why not <laughs> it's a team effort from the players all the way up to the management the management had set up this team to win you know they, they tried to get the best available players and tried to really find the they fi tried to find the holes within the team tried to fill it in fill it up and finally there was a promise for this team to reach glorious heights and today they finally did and remember in a reinforced conference you have to get the right import they got their import in Gabe Freeman what about Danny Ildefonso I don't know how he was able to concentrate in playing the series given the uh, personal circumstances that his family is undergoing and that ice cold bottle of beer is going to taste so good for these beer men tonight I don't care if it's ice cold sub-zero room temperature it doesn't matter it's going to taste real good been a long wait for a lot of these players you know these two teams they have been the kings of the fiesta four out of the last six fiesta conferences it has been won either by san miguel or hinebra this year 
in San Miguel's turn. Last year was Ginebra. And, you know, winning a championship as a player, just a culmination of all the hard work you put into a season. And you can just envy and the, the enjoyment of all the players out there for San Miguel. We'll be back with the awarding ceremonies live from the Big Dome.